A sample of college football teams' difference in rankings and the difference in their points scored were compared to find the coefficient of correlation to be .5947. If the sample size was 80, perform a hypothesis test on the coefficient of correlation. So real quickly, the scenario here is the data that was collected was the difference in uh, rankings on the teams, on these college teams, and then these teams played each other. So you have that data of the difference in their scores, the final outcome of the game. And there were some blowouts here where the home team uh, really really beat the, the visiting team by quite a bit, and vice versa. This is home minus visitors, the way the y-axis y data is represented. Um, right along this x-axis, the dots that are close to that mean that the game were very close. Uh, the difference in score was, was very close. But anyway, you can see a trend here. It's, it's, it's quite scattered, if you will, uh, but there is an upward trend. So we're going to do a hypothesis test on whether or not there, there really is a coefficient of correlation, or if this was just a, a fluke, speaking in sports talk. So, the hypothesis test. We still have the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. And the null hypothesis is that the Greek letter rho, it's not a P, it's a rho, equals zero. So that's, that's like our real R here. The real coefficient of correlation. If you, if you had all of the data, all the population of all the games that have ever been played and never will be played, and that means that there is no correlation. So the, the null hypothesis is that there is no correlation. Well, that would only make sense then that the alternative hypothesis is that rho is not equal to zero. There is some correlation because if, if the coefficient of correlation is equal to zero, then we have no correlation. But, but uh, if it's something other than zero, then there is at least some correlation. All right, the next step always with a hypothesis test is to find the p-value. So let's walk through how we're going to find the p-value. It is the area under the curve, I'll color code this, in the two tails, because we're talking about not equal to, so it's these, the sum of these two areas will be the p-value. And that area is found, let's show you what this is. This is found by finding a t-value and a negative t-value, first of all. And that t-value, let's put that right here. This t equals your r, coefficient of correlation, times the square root of n minus 2. So 80 minus 2 is in there. And then you have the square root of 1 minus r squared. Let me make sure you know that this is an n. And in the denominator, we have r squared. So that's, that's how you found t, how you would find t. So we have equals for our data uh, 0.5947 times the square root of n minus 2 would be 78. Sample size minus 2 over the square root of 1 minus 0.5947 squared. And that comes to t would be approximately equal to then... 6.533. Okay, once you have your t, now you can use Excel to find this sum of these areas. And that equals the t dist function. You can use tables, of course, as well. I like Excel because it's very accurate and fast. So t dist, and then it's looking for a t value, degrees of freedom, and then uh, one or two tails and we're going to put in two for the number of tails. By the way, I should tell you then, since we're asking for degrees of freedom, this says n minus 2 degrees of freedom is what we're going to use. So 78 would be 80 minus 2. 
Okay, so plugging those numbers in, we get t dist of the 6.533 degrees of freedom is 78. We have two tails, and I'm going to put this up here because this is our p-value. Right there, whatever we get from that output, and what we get is 6.01 times 10 to the negative ninth. Excel um, says 6.01 and then E negative 9. That's Excel's way of saying times 10 to the negative ninth. This is a very small number. Very small. That is less than, if you're not given an alpha, a significance level, you can usually assume that it could be 0 0.05. It's much less than 0 0.05 and that leads us to reject the null. When we have a very low p-value, we reject the null hypothesis. And that's kind of like crossing that out in favor of the alternative. So we could say evidence suggests that there is some correlation. And that does make sense because you look at this uh, this cloud it's not it's not just some random cloud it is there's a trend there's a definite trend there um, to those to those dots the scatter plot so evidence suggests there is some correlation that's it